Hello and good morning to Percona Live Online 2021. Uh, this presentation is about comparing uh, Percona XRDB cluster and Percona PS with a group replication in the, and see how they fit in the um, um, an environment or in an architecture that we designed for high availability and disaster recovery. Uh, my name is Marco Tusa, and I'm the MSQL tech lead in Percona and uh, principal architect. So what we are going to cover in this presentation is uh, the overview of the concept of high availability and VR, uh, and then um, what kind of issue we mainly have when uh, uh, that high availability and uh, VR should try to cover, and how PS, PS with group propagation PXC um, are able to cover those needs and what kind internally, you know, how they function and what they, there are similarities and where there are some difference. I'm very high level, not going into the technical details um, and uh, I'm not going co to compare performance in this, in this page. So why have high availability? Uh, of course, we have the OVH Inferno that represent one of the cases where obviously having a better structure of high availability and disaster recovery will help. Um, I have been, uh, I've been a witness of the negative impact because my internet service provider was having the platform on the uh, OVH um, servers and they lost everything for more than seven days. Uh, also, when they recovered uh, the servers, they, the data was obsolete and, you know, several issues. So having a good high availability and disaster recovery will help a lot in this case, right? Um, now, browsing around, because I was composing the, the slides for the, uh, for the presentation, browsing around, I found this graph that I think that is still very useful and to understand, you know, in a one shot, what, uh, what are the many events that could happen that are not all, but it's, it's still valid. It comes from an old uh, uh, Oracle uh, 9 uh, documentation. And as we can see, we go from natural disaster to human error to failure of, on a device, all things that could regularly happen. But when we talk a uh, level of high availability, what we are referring to, when we talk about high availability, we have the famous nine or infamous nine calculation, which is mainly uh, given a specific period of time in the database world, we consider high the high availability in relation to the uptime that the service provides. So given the, uh, and a specific amount of time, it could be a days, week or month or a year, we do the calculation on how much uh, in, in seconds, milliseconds, minutes or hour, this will uh, uh, reflect the, the percentage of uh, up and running. Um, for instance, in the 99.995 is just 4.32 seconds downtime per day, which is a glitch at the end, right? So it's just nothing. Uh, it becomes something like a downtime per year, the 26 minutes, which is obviously something larger. But, you know, considering the the, the small part of the day is really nothing, it's just a glitch. Um, in Percona, we do not consider, uh, you know, um, high, high available a solution that, uh, unless they have at, at least two, nine minimum, that's really, the is, is we can, we should consider high available that, but, you know, it's really the minimum thing. And uh, um, it, it normally is not advisable to go for that. We normally suggest when you ask for high availability, we suggest at least four nine. Now, high availability, what is the coverage of high availability? The high availability is to be considered a solution that provide um, the, as I said, the, the coverage for uh, um, having the system up and running um, in, in a local situation. So, you know, when we talk about a data center or something that is distributed in a very close geographic area, um, for one gigabyte, uh, 10 gigabyte Ethernet uh, network, you have normally 400 meters in terms of uh, radius, in terms of distance. And after that, you start to have some kind of um, uh, performance degradation. So uh, the system needs to provide some, the, the, needs to be able to provide the service 
constantly in a very described and limited geographic area. While disaster recovery is exactly the opposite, right? It, it needs to be far, far away in order to be able to cover eventually major events like earthquakes and uh, uh, you know power grid uh, or whatever revolutions, something like that. Um, in terms of solutions that provide one or the other, uh, we have the totally coupled cluster, which is uh, in uh, in our case covered by. Uh, PXC and Procurement Service with group replication. They both implement virtual uh, synchronous replication, which is uh, exactly that, the tight way to keep the data uh, uh, consistent between the nodes. While when we talk about uh, DR, we talk about loosely coupled clusters, and this is covered by standard asynchronous replication. Um, Percol implements uh, for MySQL has this uh, PXC and group replication with uh, uh, PS with group replication have the two different solutions in um, the Percona distribution. The Percona distribution is uh, a set of uh, packages that are tested in Percona and proved to be working correctly together. For so a version, uh, each version is tested and is uh, certified to be uh, working as it should. So instead going around and you know downloading Percona here, HAProxy there, and having po possibly uh, conflicts for because the versions do not talk. If you take the distribution, you have all the things you need there, and uh, you are, will be able to um, roll out your architecture using that. <clears throat> Now let's start to dig in a little bit uh, in, in, the, in how PS uh, with group replication and PXC works. Both cluster uh, are cluster, right? <laughs> and, uh, and they actually use multiple nodes. Now, um, group replication comes with a default of, sing of, of single primary. The concept of single primary mainly is uh, of the many nodes I have, I elect one node to be the focal point for writes. And then uh, we have uh, the concept of multi-primary, which instead is to uh, distribute the write uh, on multiple nodes. Um, PXC comes with the uh, concept of multiple writer, but then you can logically elect one of the writer as the primary. So it's not something that is inside the cluster itself or like group replication, uh, but it, it is uh, possible to achieve the same thing at uh, a higher level with uh, HAProxy or uh, ProxySQL and electing you know, the, the primary um, artificially, logically. Um, what is the benefit of having uh, multi-writers, uh, you know, multi-primary? Uh, actually, no, because when you write on multiple nodes, at the end, you, the, each node will have to resolve the conflicts with the other uh, writers and with the other nodes. And, and that means that uh, each node will have to work harder to do certification and uh, eventually roll out what they're doing. So uh, the benefit is, is no, non, non-existent at the end, really. It's a more uh, heavy load than, than anything else. Um, while um, in, in all this, we need also to consider that non writing in multiple nodes doesn't scale the, the writing at all. I mean, it, it, this kind of cluster scale only by read. And this is also important for the composition. When you start to um, build up a cluster, sorry, when we, you start to build up a cluster, you should start with the minimum requirements and then eventually um, add nodes in respect to the read factor. Uh, what does it mean? I mm, have a minimum nodes for both solutions of three nodes. So let's start with three nodes. Let's select one node as a primary. And then in ba uh, on the basis of what is needed, um, I will uh, add uh, uh, other nodes in, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in the cluster. Um, not for the write, because as I said, it doesn't scale right, but for the for the read. The advisable is um, the, uh, is to have uh, always an uh, odd number of nodes in order to facilitate the calculation of the quorum. And uh, how we will see later on, having a, 
uh, you know, even number of nodes can generate split brain and uh, other things. But that, that is uh, later on uh, something that we will see. The cluster works, both cluster works, and this is interesting because more or less, as, as you can see, they are going in parallel. Uh, the implementation may be different, you know, the elements that they use in the implementation, be, but the functionalities at the end are very similar. So also in this, um, the clusters work, uh, the solutions work um, building up a view. Uh, a view is the representation, the logical representation of uh, a set of, of, of nodes that compose the cluster in a specific moment. So when I start the cluster and I initialize it, I have view one and this node one, right? Then I, I add the second node and they change the view ID and they change the view composition. Um, I'm showing here, for instance, uh, the exam an example of three nodes, I call it view ID one, just to simplify. And the, um, the cluster used this to also identify if something is starting to work uh, not efficiently. Um, each cluster has health checks in communicating one node with another. And uh, what happened is that whenever they start to see a node that is not working efficiently, they mark the node as suspicious. When the node is suspicious, it's still part of the cluster, it's not ejected, right? It's still part of the cluster. If the um, events uh, resolve itself and the nodes start uh, continue come back uh, alive, let's say, come back and, and become 100% uh, active, nothing happened, the cluster remain as it is and it, uh, all the work uh, proceed as, as, uh, as before. While if you have um, the node that continue to be uh, unresponsive, then <clears throat> is automatically marked as a, uh, uh, to be ejected from the cluster. At this point, the cluster will need to re-elect, uh, recompose the, the view, rebuild the quorum, rebuild the, the whole uh, um, configuration and, and see, okay, yes, I'm good to go ahead. Um, if the node that was expelled wants to come back at, at that point, has to go back to the, um, the acceptance phase. So he needs to check the status that he has uh, stored uh, locally, uh, verify if he can uh, join and what is the distance from the other nodes and required. He, re he start to request the status and start to request the preset that, that are not applied locally and so on and so forth. And the change, and obviously the cluster will change the view again, right, from two to three. Now, in fa for failure detector, for instance, split brain, uh, I was mentioning that before. So everything is, is composed by, uh, is based on uh, the view that is a very important element for the calculation also of the split brain. And um, uh, for PIGC specifically, there is a very strong uh, message saying, always build the, the cluster in, using uh, an odd number of nodes. So three, five, and so on. Um, group replication is less, uh, this advice is not really strong, but uh, is, a, is better for you to go in the same way. Also, if the quorum calculation is different between the two. And um, in, in PIXC, we have the quorum calculation based on the, all, no, all the nodes participating and the weight. So it could, you can eventually play with the weight in order to have several or certain nodes to be more relevant than others. In group replication, that is not working like that, is uh, mainly uh, in the majority of nodes that can compose the cluster will say, yes, okay, we are good and we can rebuild a view of, of, uh, for, uh, for uh, the cluster composition. Um, Anyhow, the, in, when you have, let's say, a cluster of uh, five nodes and um, you, you have uh, three nodes on, uh, in data center uh, one and uh, two nodes in data center one B, which is just around this, uh, across the, the street. And um, what happened is that if you have a network partition, then the three nodes, obviously they will be able to survive. And the two other nodes instead will be you know, declared as uh, expelled by, by the, the cluster. But what happens if you have two and two? At that point, 
if you have two nodes and two nodes and the same event happened, the nodes uh, will refer to the previous view and say, hey, wait a second, uh, I'm two, what is, was the previous view? Well, it was four nodes, we are two, so there is not the majority in respect to the previous view and the world cluster will uh, put itself on hold in order to uh, allow a DBA to manually uh, take action and uh, eventually, um, you know, do some kind of operation. Or it, you can have three nodes uh, on five. You can have three nodes just uh, uh, crashing for, uh, because the, the whole uh, data center crash, like the OVH case, the main data center crash, and the other uh, uh, DC1B is still alive, but has only two nodes. What you can do? Well, in, uh, in both classes, there is the way to eventually make them restart uh, with a, force members for group replication and other, and also in for a, a PXE in order to push it. Um, but that is, uh, you know, always required uh, DBA checking, should never be something automatic. Um, there are, um, yeah, so that's it. this is it. Um, there are some technical things that I can add, but I want to keep the overview overview, not going in too much in the detail, um, just comparing how they can behave eventually. Now, uh, transaction, transactions uh, and how the apply flow works. Uh, I was talking about virtual synchronous, okay, virtually synchronous. Uh, why not synchronous? Because synchronous is when I have the writer that does the commit finalize, and I have also the secondary that does the commit finalize at the same moment. Okay, so everything is synchronous in the uh, operation when it is finally committed. Um, this doesn't happen in group replication, doesn't happen in PXC. Uh, both of them use uh, a moment of a synchronous commit, a synchronous commit, um, and it works more or less like that for both. Uh, the, the, again, the implementation can be a little bit different, but the effects at the end are the same. Um, I got the writer, the primary, and uh, who got the write. It will start to um, perform local, uh, the local operation, then commits. It replicates to the nodes. Then there is the certify phase. The first certify phase uh, said, okay, you can go ahead. At that point, the uh, primary will do the commit finalize. But the secondary nodes are still in, uh, apply, they are still applying. And then after they apply, the commit finalizes. So that moment is asynchronous, okay? And this is exactly the same for uh, uh, PXC and group replication. Yes, the, there are moments that, uh, you know, the graphs are very similar, the way of interaction are similar, not the same in the implementation, but they are very similar. And as you can see also in group replication, there's local execution, consensus certified, uh, it will push to the bin log and then commit. Well, uh, on the secondary, the receiver is the real log and then they apply and then bin log and then commit. So it's again, a synchronous process. The other important part is that when a, a cluster start to um, receive a lot of load, you may have one node that is not able to cover um, the traffic uh, as well as the primary. Um, it happens, right? Also, if you have configured everything in the same way, it happens that you have some uh, um, moment of, uh, you know, congestion or something like that, and a node start to delay in respect to the primary. If this delay become too much, then the node uh, raise a flag and ask for the cluster to slow down. This is the flow control in two words. Um, in the implementation of, of flow control is completely different between group replication and, and the PXC. Um, first of all, let's, let's check PXC. First of all, um, the flow control in PXC acts in a different way in respect to the status of the node. So when the node is just uh, open, no flow control, then it become, uh, it join the, um, uh, the cluster. And uh, so when it's joiner and donor, the, there is a, a set of um, parameters that can be uh, tuned in order to facilitate 
you know, the communication uh, to this node to recover the right sector that are uh, pushed by the, uh, the, the primary and the same time to prevent the, the, the cluster itself to go too fast in order to know, uh, which will be probably um, not allowing the, node, the joining node to join because it will be constantly trying to, to catch over the, the primary. And then um, there is uh, the joined that uh, moment that is again uh, a limited rate on the journey that to, to facilitate the journey that can apply. And then the, finally there is the, the sync, the one that is fully synchronous to the rest of the cluster. At that point, the node part is completely and uh, fully part of the, of the flow control uh, um, mechanism. Um, when it is sync it, the, the node has, um, you know, the, the node received the right set and put the right set from the primary in a receiving queue. When this receiving queue become, uh, uh, exceed uh, a certain number of, of uh, e events, uh, of elements, um, then it, uh, the node, uh, the secondary, will raise the flag saying, hey, I'm, I need to slow down. By default, if I remember correctly, 16 uh, and uh, elements, but that could be uh, obviously two. Uh, but the more you increase the queue, the more certification uh, effort that will require. So it's, it's uh, uh, something that needs to be uh, tuned carefully, but at the same time, you don't want to have a, a, a queue that is too, too uh, large. Um, and the other part is here is that when you have uh, um, a flow control, when uh, that happened, the flow control, uh, the cluster will start to reduce the, the load. And if that happened constantly, the node is not able to catch up in a, a decent way, then it could, you can also have uh, a full stop <laughs> from, you know, the cluster will just hang waiting for the, for the nodes to catch up and then reopen the, the channel. This is very impactful, in fact, and one of the problems we saw more often. While group replication works in completely different ways, not against a specific number of inside the queue, but uh, is a, a set of statistics that, is, that are calculated inside the node. Each node calculates its own statistics for a specific amount of time. By default, this amount of time is one second. And the statistics are based on X number of parameters. Uh, and here we have few, few like uh, queue sites, uh, applier queue sites, and transaction certified transaction uh, uh, apply, and so on. Um, the important part here is that when a node starts to see that is, uh, um, is when, when the node see it is okay, say, okay, I'm good and can go on. When start to see is starting to uh, have uh, problems in applying with the same rate, it will raise the flag and say, hey, to the cluster, hey, I, I need to slow down. The slowdown that will happen is uh, a percentage of the load that has been calculated in the previous view. So if I have um, done on an X number of, of operation, the cluster will try to slow down uh, per the, the percentage that is uh, declared in the um, by default 50% that is declared in the, in the primary there, uh, uh, whole, whole percent, and it will, uh, you know, reduce the load. As the same thing, when a uh, um, same way, when uh, uh, the, the node is okay to go ahead, then there will be um, a release and uh, the cluster will increase the, in per the percentage of the, uh, in relation to the percentage of the transaction applied from the, in the previous example. Now, um, the control period, which is one second, is good when you have a good traffic that allow the cluster to do calculations. But sometimes you do not have enough transactions and um, that in, in that case, the, the calculations are done on the nodes are not good enough to be uh, efficient in a, in a, for, the, for the calculation. And you may have some uh, weird behavior here. So the advice is when you see that there is a very low level of activity, increase a little bit the control period, like instead of one second, two seconds, or four seconds, five seconds, depending on you. But it's tunable. That is very important. And this, as you can see, the two flow control works in a completely different way. Now, 
message fragmentation. What is message fragmentation and why exist? Um, there is a, <clears throat> uh, the, the cluster checks the status of each node, right? It constantly, there is this messaging going back and forth that say, hey, how are you? <laughs> and um, when you have very large transactions or when you do very heavy operation like data load, uh, this ex message exchange can actually be delayed uh, until when the, the cluster become the cluster see the node that is busy as unresponsive. At that point, it is going to be marked suspicious and in the worst case also marked uh, to be expelled. And that is bad because actually the node is working, it's just busy. So um, the message fragmentation has been implemented. Uh, for PXC, we have two solutions. One is for uh, specifically for uh, data load, so for load data into whatever. And uh, it has a configurable variable, but uh, it comes with 10,000 10, uh, rules per chunk. Uh, if the data load, of course, uh, exceed that, uh, you know, it, uh, the cluster will create, the node will create chunks, and uh, in the meantime, will answer, you know, first chunk, second chunk, and answer to the to the cluster. I'm here, I'm good. And uh, the second solution is the streaming. When you have a very long transaction or very heavy transaction, then you can use streaming replication. That is at session level or a global level. So you can configure globally, you can configure by session. The suggestion is to use by session, given the fact that um, you know, normally uh, you don't, are not supposed to have very heavy or long transaction. That is not, not always true, but you know, normally is, this is the standard. So by session, you implement, you just declare the uh, fragment unit and the fragment sites, which could be uh, write set row or, demand or bytes, and then how many? And uh, you you, um, you actually have the cluster, the node fragmenting and sending, you know, by uh, sending the message to the other node while be able also to uh, to answer to the others um, to to the uh, cluster request, and at the same time is optimizing the transmission itself, right? Uh, in group replication, uh, the message fragmentation is supported by 8.0.16 and after. So if you have a, a, a cluster that is below the, that uh, version, you, you will not be able to support. Or if only you have one node in the cluster that's below 16, that will not be able to support. It's a, um, a global um, variable that uh, man manage the, the message fragmentation. And the message, the message delivery is a, a scene complete when all the nodes receive it. And the other part that is interesting is that uh, if you have a node that is actually working in the cluster, then it gets expelled for any reason. When it rejoins, it can reclaim the, uh, the message from the other nodes. And um, it needs to get, of course, all the message back. Otherwise, the cluster will reject it. Now, data consistency. Um, both clusters um, certificate, you know, the the right set when they receive it, do the certification phase. But that is actually not preventing um, the cluster to have internally data, uh, different data by node. Uh, there is no uh, the concept of single uh, data store, you know, is uh, actually distributed data store per node. And uh, the cluster itself doesn't certificate each tuple, tuple in the node. It's not able to see if, the, if there is a, um, some kind of data drift. Um, and in our experience in Precona, we have seen this happening uh, several times. It could be for a malicious act, it could be for other um, operation uh, happening in uh, during the maintenance, or it could be whatever, but it happens. Sorry, YouTube. it happens a lot. Uh, well, not a lot, but it happens. We have so many, many years. We have several cases. Um, now, 
this means that the cluster per se is not allowing you to, um, is not checking the data. And at the same time, this is for both of them. And at the same time, this, and this is the part of that are annoying me a lot. At the same time, it doesn't prevent the user to do stupid things. Actually, it allows the user to do stupid things. And I will show you now exactly what. Um, there is also another part that is uh, interesting that when, of course, a node is being discovered as inconsistent, it got expelled by, um, by the cluster to allow the DBA to check. And this is a brutal <laughs> kick out of the, of the node at the end. Um, recently uh, in Galera, we had a uh, development uh, that had in, in, uh, that have de developed a new protocol that is cluster error booting that will make this process a little bit more uh, consistent and solid and allow the cluster to behave a little bit better than just kicking out the node. Um, Anyhow, the two parameters that are uh, the, that I will use here to uh, show you how easy it is to corrupt data in a, in a node are WS rep on, on for PXC and set uh, SQL bin uh, log zero for uh, um, group replication. Let's start to see. <clears throat> I have a cluster of three nodes, and then uh, I have the primary writing. On, uh, or, and, and distributing the rights to all nodes. Then what happened is that on uh, a junior DBA or uh, someone with malicious intent connect to a secondary node, it just set, set WS rep on zero and change the right set, uh, you know, the data on the table, adding, you know, records. I did then change back to set WS rep on one and uh, after that the primary continued to push data on the same table and it tried to write on that specific node it tried to write um, in a, a, a row that already exists at that point the node say no i can't now before as i mentioned before the cluster voting the node at this point will be expelled and period no information and in remaining the, uh, in the remaining nodes uh, just on the expelled node. So it also a little bit difficult at the beginning to debug what's going on. With cl uh, cluster error booting, actually we have the node instead just uh, being out of the cluster, the, the node will say, hey, wait a second, I have a problem here. I cannot apply. What do you guys think? If the other nodes say, yeah, no, we are okay. What will happen is that the cluster will be change the view, we'll uh, go ahead with the two nodes that are okay, and uh, uh, the node that has a problem will be gently expelled. Information of, about the work process is written in all the logs of the nodes, so it's easy to debug. And the DBA at that point needs to manually fix the data uh, discrepancy uh, on, the, on, the, on the node that is expelled. The same thing actually happened in uh, group replication. And the only change is that instead of WS rep uh, uh, on, it will be used the SQL being log zero. And it happens exactly the same thing. Yes, there is super read only set on, but again, I, I need to stress this. When you uh, are able to do this kind of operation only, when uh, very often it's because you are also able to circumvent this kind of uh, limitation in, uh, in action. Of course, it's safer than WS rep on, but it's still, you know, something that it could happen. And in any case, this is just a manual action, but we have seen data drift happening for others uh, in done, or for other operation done uh, through replication that makes things very weird. Anyhow, I set SQL being log one, and then the primary writes, and uh, my node is uh, having problems. And at this point, is is it got expelled directly because uh, you know there is no um, cluster voting mechanism here. The other problem with consistency is when we have stare reads. The um, the stale reads 
but sorry, there are two solutions. Both solutions come with settings that allow the cluster to have servid. A servid is happen when I have um, writes on a, on a node and I'm trying to read uh, on another node, you know, in order to, and I, I'm looking for the same data while actually the data is still um, the not not uh, applied because uh, the virtual synchronous mechanism, right? So it's not fully synchronous. There is a moment of virtual synchronous. Um, and this, we have seen this happening very often, especially when you use proxies because, you know, the connectivity can change uh, from uh, very quickly and, uh, you know, from one uh, operation to the another. And if the application is actually done in a way that flush the, it does in one transaction, then actually immediately after try to connect, try to uh, retrieve the node again, the information again. So it, it still reads happen um, constantly, to be honest. And um, it's, a, it's something that you should not underestimate as well, because, um, uh, in a, uh, the, this is a, the graphs are represented, some uh, um, testing have done. And if you do the, uh, the testing on a medium load environment, uh, you can see that for PXC, for instance, we have uh, tr trying to write and read from another node, we have almost 50% of the operations that are stair reads. Well, for group replication is around eight in average. Percent. Now it is to notable here, and I have to mention that uh, if you increase the load from medium to high, uh, group replication just jumped from eight to fifty as well. So it, it, it is really just a moment of uh, you know the uh, when when the load uh, increment the load, they start to have problems, and uh, well, more than problems, they are just busy, and then. Still, we jump to the to the sky. Now, of course, if you instead set the parameters that, in, in order to enforce um, the um, to enforce to have consistent reads, uh, you have zero on both solutions, right? It just changes WS referencing weight or change replication group replication consistency. Boom, perfect, nothing happened. And um, the impact in terms of time is uh, uh, also interesting here because the impact uh, again with a medium load for a PXC is just five six percent um, taking just five six percent a little bit more in terms of uh, cost of time for uh, executing the operation well in a group replication is a uh, higher is 35%, sometimes a little bit more. So here we have a area of improvement uh, for uh, Oracle to work in uh, making this a little bit less impactful. Um, and of course, why we have reads, why the solutions comes with, uh, uh, with uh, these uh, default settings? Well, performance, right? But it, as you can see, at least for PXC, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, 5%, 6%, yeah, is something, but it's uh, much more important to have uh, in, a, in a cluster that is supposed to be fully consistent. It's, it's more important to have consistent data than, uh, you know, 5% uh, uh, performance loss, at least in my view, because that data is the more important thing. The consistency of the data, otherwise don't go for a relational database, go for something else. Another part of where uh, we want to analyze, and this, and this is very different between the two solutions, is DDL. Um, the DDL are, like alters, are part of the uh, normal uh, life of, of, uh, of any DBA. And what happened here is that uh, we have a completely different implementation. In PXC, we have two main mechanisms, TOI, total isolation order, and RSU. Um, the factor that should help you to identify which one of the two you use is when you do compatible, compatible changes against incompatible changes. Incompatible changes are the change that change the table structure in a way that are 
uh, if you do in a rolling mechanism with RSU, that will break the replication because of the table structure in one node will be different, for instance, from the primary to a secondary. And then, you know, trying to push the data will actually corrupt the, the replication itself, will break the replication itself because the, 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 the structure do not match. Um, well, if you have compatible changes like adding an index or the application is still not deployed, you can do that on uh, uh, using RSU in rolling uh, the um, alter you know, one node and the other node and the other node. Um, the point here is that we do not have an online BDL in uh, PXC. And the other point is that when you uh, issue a, a BDL, the owner of the process it is the cluster, right? It's the cluster itself. Um, so you do not have, you do not own, you do not control the transaction per se, and uh, you cannot kill it. And um, we have seen in the in the support and the consulting and the mail service in Percon in general, we have seen a lot and unfortunately long history of issues due to the to the DL to alters that are there for hours, sometimes days, and locking, rollback, uh, failure that bring the cluster completely down. So it's a operation that is very impactful. Um, so it's good to have control for it and be able to say, no, I need to kill the process. There is a, a good approach and mm, there is a different approach that is uh, very well described in the link I inserted here, written by one of my colleagues. Um, and it's called manual RSU. Um, there are pros and cons there, of course, as usual, but I suggest you to go and read it because it gives you the well understanding of the problem. Um, of course, to save the day, uh, we have PT online schema change as usual, which actually does the changes that you require in a way that the cluster will continue to write, there is no impact, uh, and only at the end there will be a, a moment of locking because the temporary table that they use from, um, from by uh, online schema change will need to be swapped with the production table and that of course require a locking moment. Now, group replication works in a completely different way. Uh, group replication, uh, first of all, in theory, support online BDL. And I'm talking about now. I hope this will change in the future, right? And then the operation is done by phases. Uh, if I do uh, whatever kind of alter I do, let's say that I'm doing an alter that is uh, allow the cluster to do in theory online. So I'm adding an index. Adding an index can be an operation that takes two seconds and it could be an operation that uh, stay there for hours, right? So I raise my alter specifying the algorithm and uh, uh, the method. So I want in place, no locking, and, you know, whatever. And so, and I'm adding my index. The first phase is the primary will receive the alter, will execute the alter, and I can do all the writes, no problem at all. As soon as the alter is complete on the primary, it gets shipped to the secondaries. At that moment, a meta lock is raised and all the uh, writes are locked. You cannot uh, write anymore. And it's still at that until the end of the slowest alter, on this, of the alter on the slowest node. So it could be that you have 10 hours to do the primary where you can write, and then other 10 hours on the, on the secondaries that you cannot write. Now, if you use incompatible altered, so you cannot do an online uh, DDL, you have 10 hours on the primary that are locked because of the primary, and then other 10 hours because of the secondary. So it takes the double time, not only. If you have a problem on the primary while the secondaries are applying, the cluster is not able to um, actually identify a new primary until the fastest node had done and complete the outer operation. Again, if this is, takes 10 hours, you may be without a primary for 10 hours. Um, 
to save the day again with the online schema change and you will be safe. But you know, it, it's not good, it's annoying. There is a bug about that. I hope Oracle is investigating and uh, is coming back with something that will help us to have a better solution because this one is a little bit not satisfactory for uh, in my in my view now we have rows around the, the two different solutions where they match where they diverge how they behave now let's see the stack when i design high availability i don't look only at the data layer right i'm looking to the world stack i'm trying to start to from the applications so i have redundancy on the application level, maybe using containers or whatever, so to, to be able to build and recreate easily the, the application node. Then I have the, um, the connection layer, uh, which starts normally with uh, something like a load balancer or a physical load balancer, logical load balancer, or something like Keep Alive D that uh, is installed on different nodes and con uh, concerted the, uh, a virtual IP. Then you have uh, a proxy layer that is responsible to connect to the data layer and eventually manage uh, the connectivity there, doing read price splitting or other functionality, depending what you what you need. And this is, uh, um, you know, the, the at the end the last uh, layer is the data layer itself. And you can see that the rest of the structure more or less remain the same. And this is very good because that allows us to replace one technology eventually with the other, unless we have problems with the application to support that, right? So it is good to be able to, you know, we have more or less the same kind of uh, activity, the functionalities. Um, we see the difference uh, in flow control or DDL are, you know, uh, the flow control is just the implementation is different. In DDL, the difference is big, but at the end, if you use Perconat PT uh, online schema change, that will behave similarly. So you don't will be impacted by that. And um, so it, it, it's important to be able to eventually uh, be um, in, in the position to replace one technology with the other. And that's for high availability. Now for DR, uh, instead building up the DR, we need to be uh, aware of the fact that both solutions claim to be not one natively support, able to support one natively. But then in small letter, there is written that you need to have a good uh, network in order to do so. Now, as, as I said at the beginning, DR is um, not just across the street. That is still high, high, in the high availability configuration. DR is across the ocean, like uh, London, New York, or Frankfurt and New York, uh, Sydney, something <laughs> distributed, right? Uh, very far. And uh, pretending to have a totally couple cluster working on the one is uh, looking for trouble. Because yes, it, you may have it work, but as soon as you start to have load, that is actually a, a significant load, the cluster and, and the network is uh, unstable in the, on the internet, is by default unstable. You will have problems, period. No discussion about it. Unless you do one transaction per second, then you will be safe, right? So how we can do uh, uh, the, the DR? Well, it's simple. We need to use asynchronous replication as I uh, described at the beginning. Um, the problem with asynchronous replication is that uh, assuming we have DC1, DC2, uh, DC1 is the uh, primary uh, data center and DC2 is the replica. So source DC1 and replica DC2. I uh, set up uh, my primary node on uh, DC2 to connect uh, to the source uh, on uh, DC1. And what happened is that uh, if something goes wrong on, uh, on the node on, on DC1, like uh, maintenance or uh, it crash, uh, then you, you, my uh, connection for the replication will, uh, will just disappear and uh, my DC2 data center will uh, lose its um, uh, will will start to delay in respect to DC1. So what can be done? Um, with uh, PXC, we can, uh, if we if we use, we have two solutions. 
with big C. We can use uh, auto, uh, we have asynchronous replication, but using the auto failover mechanism. Auto failover mechanism is uh, available from 8.0.22, big C 8.0.22, and uh, it is um, uh, working more or less in this way. Uh, you can set on any node or all the nodes eventually, but do not activate all the nodes, just one node at a time. Um, but you can set the uh, connection to one uh, from the from the replica to one source node, and then say, I have the, uh, these other two nodes, three nodes, four nodes, whatever, uh, as um, replacement if something happened to that node. And what happened is that if something happened to that to the node, of course, the um, the node itself, the the auto failover will shift to another source, and uh, and will continue to replicate. And that is already a huge improvement. But it will not cover if my uh, node on the my my replica node on the DC two crash. Um, Let's say that I have configured the three, all the three nodes to be eventually uh, replicas. Um, but again, I need to implement one node at a time. And if uh, my node, my replica node crash, I need to manually take action there, right? I need to manually connect and reactivate uh, the uh, replication from uh, DC2 reading the source on DC1. Given this is asynchronous, you can do that, right? It's not huge impact, you can do it. Or you can use uh, a very uh, smart script written by my colleague, uh, Yves Trudeau, Pixie Replication Manager, which is uh, a, script, a simple script that allows to manage exactly this situation. Um, you don't even need to set up auto sync, uh, auto failover. It does everything for you, the script. Um, and it will handle the node that is replicating from uh, uh, and the primary and it will shift the node if it's uh, failing uh, on both the data center and it works very efficiently and uh, and is designed for PC, which uh, by the way has a problem in respect to group replication because group replication as I was saying in the beginning elects the primary while uh, PC see all the node as the same there is no internal mechanism to elect the primary so is more difficult to you know do the the confrontation the calculation and uh, the checking about which node uh, should be um, which node should become eventually the replica. Okay, so group replication is bad. What is uh, as I said, you can use auto uh, failover mechanism. Same thing as for um, uh, same thing as for uh, PXC, and the problem are, is exactly the same. But as I was mentioning. Um, the difference here is that I know exactly who is the primary. So um, while I, I, we are waiting for uh, MySQL to come out with uh, uh, an embedded solution, I just do I just did a proof of concept. I wrote a very simple procedure, so procedure that I call GR failover and is available on my GitHub, um, which actually check the status of the of the nodes and identify the uh, the primary on the replica side and say, okay, are you active? Yeah, all good. Then if you say, if you, say, if you see that the node is not able to replicate anymore because there is an epoch that is constantly refreshed, if you say that this doesn't work anymore, then we'll ident try to identify and we'll identify the next primary, the other primary, and we'll rebuild the, the connectivity there. Okay, so it will establish the connectivity there with that. And maybe the same effect from, uh, you know, PXE replication manager, but simplified because we already have the primary election in, uh, in um, group replication. So it's much simpler for, the, uh, for, for us in group replication to decide who should be the, the replica. Now, in terms of adoption, we have uh, um, the two products that uh, PXC obviously is, uh, is around from longer time, you know, almost 13 years, if not even more, is uh, the most suggested solution for high availability right now. And uh, we have many years of knowledge, consolidating knowledge, uh, consolidating knowledge about how it works, what kind of problem it has, what, uh, what are the most common issues. 
And um, given that, you know, it's easier, easier for everybody to interact with the product. So all these are very good points for a PXC. For a, a cons, a little bit cons, let's say that we have the fact that um, some of the new features are going to exist only in MariaDB Enterprise for Codership and uh, uh, also the move to support uh, on the GTRD for uh, coming from Maria that is a different protocol that is absolutely not compatible with uh, the others. Me being a community person, I personally feel uncomfortable with these changes, but that's me only. The other part is um, the code is shared as tar. There is not a visibility about the changes in the Git repo. So it's more difficult to interact with the code itself and to provide feedback and to provide a, an announcement and, you know, a, a, as open source uh, normally is. Um, group replication um, is a uh, pros are obvious uh, is uh, one of the main core feature in uh, for Oracle from SQL, especially now for the cloud. So it's, it's, uh, if you check in the cloud, you will see that uh, the, uh, the 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 solution almost all the solution use group replication behind, um, and it uses well known mechanism like GTID binary log, and so nothing new here. Given that the knowledge, the base knowledge is very well consolidated, what we need to do is just learn the small part on top related you know, to um, the group replication itself and tooling about it. Um, and uh, Precona already has a good training for uh, 101, Precona 101 for group replication, and we are developing the 201. Um, so if you're interested. Um, and uh, code is available on GitHub. You can go there. You can read any single line, which is fantastic. And you can download it, do some tests, eventually change the code and see all. Uh, the cons uh, is that it's relatively new. It's only uh, from 2014 where we had the Hello World in a presentation. I remember that. And uh, the first uh, almost ready production uh, uh, version was 8020 from my side, from my point of view, but, you know, and of course the adoption is still limited. So we need to help in, in the improvement uh, and the adoption. We need to promote this in order to be able through the community to uh, suggest fixes, to identify additional corner bugs that are difficult to, to identify and to make the product better. In terms of monitoring, both come uh, PMM, uh, Percona uh, uh, monitoring and the management tool has uh, dashboards for PXC and for group replication. Group replication, we are enhancing the dashboard constantly. So what you see today, it could be better tomorrow, uh, but they're uh, there and uh, it, it's very, they're very useful to uh, debug issues um, on the products itself. So in conclusion, um, and I, I would say that Percona support both PXC and group replication um, as in terms of architecture, uh, when we, we build the architecture, you can choose one or the other. Um, the main structure of the architecture, you know, the different stack will remain the same. It's really trying to understand which fit better your needs in terms of the database layer. Uh, and it's very good to have the two solutions. Um, of course, PXC is still a very strong solution and it's not going to disappear or go anywhere. Uh, but at the same time, group replication is uh, becoming better and better. And we uh, really want to have uh, that more adopted in order to you know, be able to um, uh, make it better as product, as a, as a, as a um, as community. And I think this is all. Uh, I will really appreciate any question that you all want to send to me and I will answer uh, asynchronously. Thank you very much and have a, a nice day.